Hello and welcome to our Winchcombe club site here in glorious sunny Gloucestershire. Now in the summer we were usually taking our cooking demos out and about various club events. Obviously we haven't been able to so we thought we would bring it to you this way. So today we're going to do a virtual club show that we would usually do at the NEC. Often when we film my recipes, we'll do it in a very slick, edited way. But no, I've been told we're going to put up four cameras and we're just going to shoot it as live. So anyone who usually comes to our club shows where I'm doing cooking demos will know that there's a, a certain element of chaos to it, which shooting this live means you'll, you'll get to experience all of that. Obviously, that's the nature of campsite cooking. That's why I like it so much. It's all about enjoying yourself, experimenting a little. And if things go wrong, that's fine. I'm actually going to cook this morning a tandoori chicken style dish uh, with a, I've made up my own kind of coleslaw. So I've made a mango coleslaw with some peanut butter and some lime and it's absolutely delicious. To go with it, I'm doing some, I've just done some rice. I've turned the rice off, letting it steam away in there. And I'm gonna add a little bit of spinach to it to get the greens into the kids. So I'm gonna put a little bit of spinach in, give that a mix around and that will start to wilt. So I'm gonna put the lid back on, keep it warm, and then I will show you the rest of the dish. Right, lid back on. Now a large part of this dish is all about the marinating. We often talk about uh, marinating a piece of steak or chicken and not really giving much thought as to why we're doing it. Obviously to give flavor, but there's a large part of marinating is to do with tenderizing the flesh of the meat. So that's why you'll often have something citric or acidic in a marinade, such as red wine if you're doing beef, or lemon, lemon and garlic for a piece of chicken. You'll add your flavours too, so obviously get garlic would flavour it, you add your spices, and that's why you put the oil in as well, it helps that sort of seep into the flesh. I'm also going to use yoghurt in mine today, because yoghurt has certain enzymes in it that also break down the flesh of, say, this chicken, so it'll make it nice and tender. So I'll make my marinade. So I've got some natural yogurts here, which I'm going to put into my freezer bag. And as I do this, there's about 100 mils of yogurt, about a quarter of that. Now, this may look a bit unusual the way I'm doing it, but again, a top camping tip for me for cooking is the friendly freezer bag. I've put it over a bowl, which means that rather than slopping it about, just trying to hold the bag open, it, it keeps it secure. I put my meat in there, put, put all the ingredients, tie it up, and then I put it in my cool box. Now I've got a camper van, so doing things in like big Tupperware dishes and things like that, um, just a bit bulky. So the freezer bag is definitely your friend. And of course, if you wash it out with hot soapy water, then you can use it again. So it's, it's not too wasteful. So into that, so I've got 100 mils of natural yogurt there. I've got one, heaped and very generous and a bit teaspoon of tandoori spice three cloves of garlic you want it nice and garlicky now i'm using uh lazy garlic often i'll come along with my my garlic grater or it's a zester but i use it for grating garlic as well but if you want to keep things simple on a campsite that's completely fine we're not chefing here we're enjoying life so one top tip that I often take along to my cooking demos is to show sort of new campers my store cupboard, which is my sturdy bag, which I've had for years, probably it's a good 12 years old this. And in it, and it's every camping trip, I take all my spices, I'll take a lemon, things like salt and pepper, but also vinegars and, and honey, anything that you can make a salad dressing, you can make a marinade. And therefore, when you go out and about, maybe to a market or farm shop and you've just got a piece of chicken or some steak, you only need to buy that and all your other ingredients are back in your unit, your tent, whatever. So I would recommend a, a movable store cupboard that you take with you. So in that, I've got my lazy garlic. So apparently a teaspoon, which I think is right. A teaspoon is a clove. So I'm just gonna finish that up. So that's my 100 mils of yogurt, very generous teaspoon of tandoori spice mix and my garlic. I'm going to add a little bit of lemon into that. Take out the pip. There we go. Now we're going to throw it on the floor. We wouldn't do that on campsites. 
and then about a tablespoon of oil. Then give it a good old squish and mix it all together. It's very satisfying. Now, while we were filming, obviously you might hear all kinds of noises going on behind me. I think someone's mowing the lawn, but there's also lots of ducks that are in this glorious lake on the Winchcombe site. But we've just had a visitor as well. We've had a swan who I think possibly likes the smell of uh, curry and came over, but I tried to make friends and it was a bit, a bit hissy. So um, we'll just keep going if he comes back, which is the joy of doing this live. Right, so I've got my marinade in there and now I need my chicken. So I've got two chicken breasts and I've got greaseproof paper and my mallet. You need to tenderize your chicken, or actually what you need to do is to make your chicken sort of a uniform two centimeters across, because obviously the nature of a chicken breast is it's a, got a humpy bit in the middle, and you want to put it on the grill so it's all even, so that when you're cooking it, you're not having the ends really cooked and the middle bit still raw. So, this is the bit I love. You're not clearly gonna take a rolling pin whilst camping, but you do have a mallet, so give it a good slap quite satisfying drawing attention of people at the other pitches ta-da there we go and then I'm just going to pop those into the bag of marinade this is a nice bit and I just give it a squish so I would do this prep in the morning if you're going to have this for lunch you want to give it a Tie it up so it doesn't go all over your cool box or your fridge. And then you need to put that in there for about two hours minimum. So go off and do something nice. Let's just give my hands a little bit of a wash there. And uh, I think I'm going to go and look for the swan. And we've got about... I did say it was morning, didn't I? <laughs> Cheers. So the chickens had a good two hours marinating there. I've just scraped a little bit of the yogurt off so there's not too much of an excess. And then I'm going to put it on to the griddle or oh, griddle plate. Now this kadak is the two cook deluxe, so called because it has two gas rings. It comes with two pots down, so you could just do a saucepans, uh, frying pans. But you also get with it a griddle pan like this and also a flat one. So you can cook fried eggs on it, you can do your bacon on it, do meat. So obviously this dish I've used one gas hob as the, to cook the rice, plus I can barbecue at the same time. So as a, a starting out in camping, I would recommend this as an absolutely fantastic piece of kit. Now Kadak are really great and they sort of support all our, our live shows that we do. So we often try and use all the, the different range, but this one's been particularly handy, I have to say, while we've been in Winchcombe. So that's going to need probably about, probably, about five or six minutes on a, each side. So while that's cooking, put that in the washing up. I'm going to make my coleslaw. So very, very simple. In fact, I might make, I'll make the sauce first. So peanut butter, crunchy peanut butter. That's the way forward. So I'm going to put two tablespoons, generous ones, in there. Same with lime juice. So of course, could bring fresh lime, though this, I carry this around, particularly handy, lasts a lot longer. So I've got two spoonfuls of that. And then the ingredient to go with this chicken that really makes this coleslaw is the mango chutney here we go that squeak behind me it better be a duck and not the swan <laughs> he was chasing me earlier so start giving that a mix around and then you want about two tablespoons of water just to loosen it up and then be patient and start to mix it all together so i have to say this is my first time in the winchcombe site and I cannot believe I've not been here before because it's utterly beautiful. We even went into the little town of Winchcombe last night, all that beautiful Cotswold stone cottages. High Street is just a picture. It's so beautiful. There's a steam train. I don't know if we'll see it today. There's a steam train that runs along the back there that you can access from the site. And there's a, a really lovely pub, I've been told by the people on the next pitch. 
for dinner that you can walk. It's only a couple of fields away. So I'm very impressed with this. So I might come back with the family. I might put a little bit more water in there. Give it an extra width and then start to cut my veg. So I bought some red cabbage. Red cabbage and white cabbage, depends how many people you're feeding. Red cabbage, white cabbage goes really well. I keep it simple with just the cabbage and the carrots. There we go, slice it all up. And you actually feel like you're eating something very healthy. Now I, I do, I love normal coleslaw covered in mayo, but actually this is a nice break from that to be honest. There's a little bit of a twist with your mango and your peanut butter. There we go, mix that all up, throw in the big bits. And I'm gonna put that in the dressing. For the purposes of being speedy, I'll get onto the carrots. And then an apple. You don't even need to grate it. I mean, you don't even need to take the skin off, you just need to grate it. And that adds a really nice sweetness to it as well. I'm gonna finish off with a little pinch of salt and pepper. Here we go. I was also asking the site wardens that there's a farm shop not far from here as well. So if you come and stay here, you can go and buy all those lovely local ingredients. Now, I know Evesham's not too far from here. And the reason I know about Evesham is that they are the people of the farm. Farmers around Evesham are famous for growing asparagus in the asparagus seasons of May and June. And they even have an annual asparafest. Right. If you can see amongst the mess that I have made, I'm just mixing this all together. You even get the crunch because I've used crunchy peanut butter and I have to say that really does make this coleslaw because you get the, get the crunch of the nuts too. A little bit of salt and pepper. There we go. Apparently the site also has a, a visiting heron and there are fish in the lake for people to come and fish too. It's a very mellow, relaxing sight. Right, so I'm gonna turn the chicken over. Oops. Smelling great, I have to say. And then I'm gonna leave that for about another, probably needs another good six or seven minutes looking at that. And we'll come back to that and serve everything up. So that chicken is looking perfectly cooked. And it's smelling so wonderful. So turning the gas off, I'm gonna start plating up. I think I'll just cut it into some fancy slices. Obviously there's no excuse for not arranging your food nicely on the plate. Certainly you've got time whilst you're camping. So my rice is done, the spinach is wilted. Here's my, uh, my fancy trick that I always get a woo from my kids, because obviously I do, I have time to do it when I'm camping, but I don't bother doing it when I'm at home. Right, let's see, let's hope it's, there we go. It looks slightly posh, doesn't it? Got my chicken. It smells amazing. And then a decent portion of this lovely gooey coleslaw, but gooey without the mayonnaise. Whoop. Throw it around. There we go. There you go, tandoori chicken and a mango and peanut coleslaw and some spinach rice. Enjoy. <laughs>